Hey guys, and welcome to a new tutorial. This tutorial will actually be a part of a bigger series which I will split into four big topics. The first one, so this video you are just watching, will cover using a big library of animations and how to make an animation CryEngine ready and usable on a playable character. Overall, the task is not that hard, but there is a lot of theory behind it and you people use a lot of different tools and we need to aim for each and one of them, with all their different methods and ways. In this tutorial, I will explain the workflow with 3ds Max. In the next Maya and then Blender, the final tutorial of the series, where we will reach our ultimate goal, which is to have a player character with forward motion and a sword that the player can sheath and unsheath. Now we either have a character already, or for the tutorial you want to have a character you can download. There is an amazing tool for that called Mixamo. Mixamo provides two things we need. A huge databank of motion captured animation and an online automatic rigging service. Mixamo's autorigger applies machine learning to understand where the limbs of a 3D model are and uses that information to insert a skeleton or a rig into the 3D model, as well as calculating the skinning weights. Mixamo is available for free for everyone with an Adobe account and does not require a subscription. You can use the animations in your project, even commercially. Go to Mixamo.com, register if you haven't already and log in with your Adobe ID. As soon as you have that and as soon as you logged in into Mixamo, you will find a huge databank of animations, but not only animations. You will also find characters you can adjust and download. You can choose a character if you like to be able to follow this tutorial, but if you have a character already without the skeleton, we can use the automatic rigging function by clicking this button and uploading our character. Either drag and drop your character or click on the selector. This can take a minute or two. The first step with the auto rigger tool should be reorienting your character so it's facing you directly. Next step is to place the markers for the auto-rigging process to start. You can choose different skeleton types, which defines the level of detail your rig should have. 65 is the total number of possible joints for the entire skeleton. A smaller number will decrease the number of chain joints, for example 49 will only have a chain of joints for the thumb, index and ring finger. The last one will drive the middle ring and the pinky fingers. Next step is to help the autorigger identify the proportions of the body. For that, we need to place our markers on our character. We have chin, wrists, elbows, knees and the groin. Just follow along, this procedure is quite simple. You are not forced to use symmetry for the placement of the markers, but if your model is symmetrical, it's definitely recommended. Press next to let the autorigger do its job when you're done. This will again take a few minutes. In the final panel we have the review. We can take a look at our auto-generated skeleton and we already have an idle animation. Now we can apply any animation we want to have on our model. Knock yourself out, play around with it for yourself. We are going to pick a character which Mixamo already provides, the Xbot. So, look through the animations, take your time and download as many as you want to. But we also have a tutorial going on here, so remember? We need some basic motion animations like running, walking and jumping. For now, we will use running. Here in the search bar, type running. And if you have done that, click on the running animation you like. You have one you like? Cool. Now do clicking on it. Now. You have the animation, but you have additional settings you can use. Overdrives defines the speed of your animation and everything beneath should be actually self-explanatory. We don't really need any of the settings, so we can move on. Let's download this animation. In the download window, choose the default FPX format. I honestly don't know the difference between these two formats here. We surely want some skin on our character and we always want our 30 frames per second and we don't need any keyframe reduction. We download. If you have downloaded your animations, put them into a clean folder. We will need a clean structured folder later on, but 
there is one animation left that is required for this tutorial. We need the T-Pose, so returning back to the search bar of Mixamo, search for this T-Pose. There you go. Download this with the same settings as before. Okay, good job so far, but we need to talk about something. You might be wondering, well, I can import those animations in the Cry Engine, right? But can I use those for the player character as well? Well, you can download the characters here, uh, or use your own characters, rig them and put animations on them. But this only works for non-playable characters in your project. The reason is that the rig and the joints are facing the wrong direction on the y-axis. In our world coordinate system in CryEngine, we use the y-axis as the forward direction, z is up and x is right. This means, if you would use this character as a playable entity, the character would face the opposite direction. We need to change that. I will explain how you can reorient the animation into the opposite direction in 3ds Max, Maya and Blender. Again, this video will only be covering 3ds Max. And before we can start, we need to use a plugin which our very own technical artist has provided on our marketplace for free of course, the CryEngine 3ds Max Utilities. Download the file from our marketplace, linked in the description below. You can download while I'll keep talking. As I've already mentioned, we need to change the orientation of our animation, because the Mixamo animations are facing the wrong direction. We need to change that, but only reorienting the position would not be enough. We also need additional steps, reorient the skin mesh as well. And I'm also going to show you a method to batch multiple animations at once. This is going to be really awesome. You have the file? It should appear in your CryEngine launcher under my assets right here. If you have it, open it in your Windows Explorer and look for this file you currently see on my screen. Cool, now please open 3ds Max. And as soon as you have it open, simply drag and drop this one file here into your 3ds Max viewport. That's it, the plugin is installed and now we need to import the T-Pose of our character we downloaded earlier from Mixamo. Click on the Max icon up here and navigate to the Import button. Click on it, navigate to your T-Pose character in your folder and double click on him. A new panel will pop up now. This is the FBX import panel. Here we can make some adjustments and change settings before we actually import our character. For now, three things are very important for us. The include panel, where we can decide if we want to add the content inside our FBX, or to simply update our current scene in 3ds Max with the content of the FBX. Since our scene is empty, we need to add new content. And the second panel, which is also really important, is animation. Click on it as well. You can leave the rest as it is right now. Now click OK and wait a few seconds. Cool, we have the T-Post character in 3ds Max now. Oh, and by the way, you can maximize your view by clicking this little button over here and also rotate your character with this rotation box. Now since we added the new plugin, we also have a new tab over here, CE Max Utils. Click on it and go to Animation, Cat Utils and Anim. First step that is important to us is to reorient the skin that our character has. So to do that, the plugin needs to know which meshes we want to reorient. We can auto-collect the skin files here with this button. The plugin will also recognize the hip bone for us and we can decide the degree or more. The goal we want our skin to be positioned at, by default, it's 180 degrees on the Z-axis. This is exactly what we need. So, observing the model and the gizmo, you can see that the character is facing the negative Y-axis direction. CryEngine always requires the front movement direction to be in the positive direction on the Y-axis. So we can determine that our character needs to be rotated by 180 degrees. Got that? Okay, then click on that button. This will take a few minutes. If you have a character with a lot of skin. We only have two meshes, so that should be done really quick. Our character has the required orientation of its skin files now. This is awesome. Off to the next step. 
we need to assign a root bone to our skeleton. This is an important and essential step in our workflow. CryEngine and other engines require the setup for the translation of an animation. The root bone is getting information or the information is being translated from the hip bone to the root bone. A root bone is the first bone in the parent-child hierarchy. It will both translate and or rotate the model relative to the world space. We move a character from one application to another. And in this perfect example, you can see that those two have different world space requirements, Y and negative Y. Having a root bone gives you an easier process for changing the relative position of the character as the root than it would be changing the orientation of the model if the hips were the root. Why am I not able to rotate the hip, you might ask? Having a root bone as a parent for the hip bone allows you to separate hip movement from root motion. The character can run with side-to-side -side hip movements without actually affecting the root motion itself. Being able to control hip and root motion separately is a useful function, and now I need to catch some breath. Okay, you got that so far. Then, in our outliner, where the information of our scene is stored, click on a body skin file. We need that step because a root bone is always created from the skin mesh. After you click on the body skin file, click on the export root to character. Now you see our rig has a new bone in the top of the hierarchy and also we have a new bone visually underneath our character. You can rename it of course, but I will leave it as it is. Also create a skeleton CHR from the skeleton skin mesh. This is rather an old workflow, but the script still requires a step. So click on the skin file in the outliner and then click the button to create the CHR. Done? Cool, then off to the next step. Which is actually saving what we have so far as the main and origin file. This is our source we can always return to and work from. In a new folder or where your previous animations are located, save that file as a max file. I will name it mixamo underscore origin file. Great. Now we have our source file we can always work from. We can start adding animations on top of the typos. Click on this icon here again and click on import. Now we will look for a motion animation, like running for example, to click on it. The FPX import pop-up has returned once more. Uh, this time we only want to update our typos character with an animation. So please choose the update animation option and don't forget to turn on the animation checkbox if it has not turned on already. Now import that animation. You can already see if you play the animation with the slider down here, it's facing the wrong direction. We have came prepared and therefore solving that problem is really easy. We need to reorient the global motion. In the outliner, click on the pelvis, which is the hip bone. You can change the type of a selection right here if you have issues selecting, selecting objects in the outliner. You have the hip bone selected. Now assign the pelvis for the plugin to know what to rotate right here. Now we need to set the values or the number of degrees the plugin should rotate the pelvis to. The default setting has 180 degrees on the z-axis. This is again exactly what we need for our character to be facing the correct direction. Leave the other settings be, since we don't need to change them at all. Now, finally, reorient the global motion direction. Fantastic. If we again play the animation, you can see that it plays in the correct direction, but the root bone is not moving along with the animation. This is a problem. Imagine having a playable character, but every time the animation of movement loops, it will reset you back to the origin position. We need to translate the movement of the pelvis to the root motion so it can move along. The next step is extracting pelvis motion, and this is exactly what's going to solve our problem. We have three different axes here. But before we can continue, we need a little bit of background information here again. What we are doing here is projecting the movement of the pelvis to the root bone. But if our pelvis has a backflip animation, we don't want our root bone to do a backflip, right? That's why we need to eliminate certain axes to avoid that kind of behavior. A few examples. 
If your character has a stumble in animation or a roll forward and you have a camera attached to our character, you don't want the camera to stumble or roll forward with the animation. So it's more of a game-based decision. If you want that stumble together with the camera motion, then you don't eliminate certain axes. That's why I recommend splitting your animations into according folders depending on whether you want to have a this motion or not. Here we only need the translation on the Y axis. Leave the settings as they are, but we need to assign the pelvis and the root node so the plugin can actually translate the motion of those two. In the outliner, select the hip bone and assign the hip bone to the from selection in the plugin. Now back to the outliner and select the root bone and also assign it to the to selection of the plugin. Now extract the motion. Awesome, you can see the root bone is now following our animation into the correct direction. Done! We can export that file now. Clicking on the Max icon over here and clicking on Export. Save it somewhere in your folder structure and as soon as the FBX importer pops up back again, click on Export the animation when it's not already selected. You can also add skin deformations if your character has any facial animations. Ok, Export. Now you've learned how you can reorient an animation in 3ds Max. To repeat that procedure with other animation files, you need to reset the whole scene and you also have to close the plugin and to reopen it again. And if you have a clean scene, you open the origin file we have saved before. You also have to recollect all the skin files here. Just auto-collect them, that's it. Now you can repeat the progress, as we already did by adding an animation to our tpost origin file. So always reset the scene and the plugin if you have a new animation you want to reorient. Now you might ask, well, I have a lot of animation files, thousands and thousands. There is a solution for that in 3ds Max. It's called Animation Batch. Let's reset the whole scene again and reopen the plugin. We need to click on Anim Batch over here, but before we can continue, you need to have a clean structure, remember? I mentioned that a few times already. In the folder where you have your origin max file, of the reoriented typos, create a new folder called Animations. In that folder, you put all your animations that you downloaded from Mixamo. In that folder, you create a new folder called Output. Leave that folder empty for now. Now that we have our setup, we can start the batching fun. Choose the origin week we saved earlier as the bind pose in the first selector of the animation batching. In the second one, you choose the animations that you copied earlier into that folder. Following so far? Now we need to add the tag that this function will look for now. In this case, it will look for the name of our pelvis, so we have to name it in the same way. Rename the hip pelvis bone to your exact skeleton hip bone. In this case, it's Maximo Hips. And also choose a skin CHR node name. Click over here and the plugin should automatically recognize the skin file inside your origin max file. In the Motion Extraction tab, Rotate Z Direction should be at 180 degrees, since we only want to rotate our animation to the opposite direction. In the Extract Global Motion to Root Node, there is a little bug. Forward Y and Sideward X are flipped. So, if we want to have proper forward motion only, we need to select the Sideways X motion. We will leave the rest as it is. Down here, we need to select our final output folder. If you have done that, we need to click on Export iCAF. The plugin will create a new subfolder for you with the output of the i underscore cav files. And this is, well, exactly what we need for CryEngine, the uncompressed animation. Not to be confused with CAF files. CAF files are compressed animations files and their relationship to uncompressed animations is similar to the relationship between TIFF and DDS files. Currently, the asset browser does not know about iCAF files. 
but the character tool does. So as soon as you have those files, you need to process them by using the character tool. This is something that we are going to cover in the last tutorial of the series. Okay, let's not get carried away too much since we are so good at it. <laughs> Click on the run animation batching. This process will also take a few minutes, but when it's done, you will have each and one animation you had in the previous animation folder reoriented and saved as the fbx file and also saved as the icaf file. Okay, great. I know this was a lot of information at once and there is a lot to swallow, but we're getting there. Keep in mind that this series will have different workflows and approaches due to different DCC tools. Really looking forward to share them with you, but for now I will say thank you for watching and leave us a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, our official social media channels is where you can always reach out to us and they are linked in the description below. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video.